Welcome to Unsound Logic with Nico and Jeremy. Today, we'll be discussing something that's been on my mind for a really, really long time, something I think about a lot in the bathroom. What would life be like if the internet went away tomorrow? So how often? <laughs> do you oh, think about probably this? once every other day or so it comes up into my head. What? Do, okay. Did something happen in your childhood? Take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had a childhood where an internet did not exist. That's what. I but you were far longer without internet than me. I was. I was born in '79, and I did not log into the internet for the first time until 1994, I think. '95. It was 1995. I, I think still I was remember, like seven. I still remember where I was and what I was doing the very first time I logged <laughs> onto the internet. I was at a friend's house. They had just gotten the internet probably a month ago. And the only thing they really had to do was there was this uh, chat client called Freetel that let oh, you Jesus. chat with people like all over the world. And so we would like just type in a random girl's name and it would like pull up everyone who was had the username with that girl and like hey how's it going you know stuff like that it was pretty weak but then, then you found porn with the fire 56k <laughs> and the yes. image is slowly oh we didn't even have 56k when that started we uh it was like 38 or yes. 28 yeah so good times take like three minutes to load an image and it was we I used to share we uh, porn on floppies <laughs> I never did that. I don't think I really ever... Uh, well, I've never really traded porn with anyone. <laughs> you know, my, my days of trading porn were like borrowing your friend's Playboy magazines or whatever. That's where that's the, that's where I came from on that. So We had maybe like ten boys in the classroom and like three boys swapping floppies all the time. What you got in there? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a lot easier to swap a disc than it was to swap a magazine. But yes. we like we would like decorate the interior of our lockers at school with centerfolds and stuff like that, and just not let picture not, not not let the teachers see. Can you imagine uh, what would happen if the internet went away? Have you like how much have you actually thought about this, or is it just like two seconds of hmm? And then back well, no, to something the world else? would come to a crashing halt right now. As it, yes, things have become we have become so integrated with the internet of things that everything in today's society is it's all linked it would be an actual yeah. disaster it would be uh there are some of us who would handle it better than others obviously those of us born before a certain date i think mm -hmm. would still be able to get by but it would require some retuning or retraining but businesses and things like that well just to just to give you an example I have, for those of you who don't know, I have a law enforcement background, and I've been a cop off and on for the past 10 years or so. We have a program called NCIC, National Crime Information Center, where anytime we pull somebody over or we run somebody's information, it all goes to this, this network where you can pull up the record of everything that they've ever done that they've been arrested for or picked up for, every speeding ticket, things like that. So it's even, that's like a cloud service? Uh, it's not a cloud service. I mean, I guess you could call it a cloud service, but it's just it's a network that uh, all goes to a central database. So yeah, I guess it was cloud before cloud existed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back in the old days, in the 80s and early 90s, in order to run someone's information after you arrested them, you had to send it into the NCIC by paper. You had to. They had what they called a teletype, which is kind of a a, a fax machine, I guess. And you would send in the name, date of birth, social security, whatever, and, and they would get back to you. You it could be days, in a couple of occasions, it could be weeks. So the whole process of, of how we arrested someone and how they got charged and, and everything else, it was just a, a lot longer of a process. And nowadays you can type in a name and a date of birth and you can know within at latest two or three minutes whether or not they've got a warrant out in another state or something like that. So it really revolutionized that. So I think just looking at from my personal experience in, in, in the law enforcement world, it would slow things down to a crawl. Mm, uh, a lot of uh, modern companies deal with internet every day, yes. and if, if suddenly there is no internet, there's chaos. Think about like any banks 
uh, that are out there because with the advent mm-hmm. of the internet, you know, you could transfer money across uh, PayPal, you could transfer money across the world in the blink of an eye. Whereas before you had to go to like Western Union or whatever and, and wire the money over and it could be a two or three day affair depending on where you're sending it, stuff like that. But like banks, banks would completely shut down because they're all tied off to the internet now. Nobody could transfer money anywhere. All these businesses would just be, I mean, I don't, I don't know how people would go about their lives. I think most, most people would have to give up their smartphones and go back to landlines because <laughs> 90% of what we do on our phones is internet stuff. And I don't even think our modern phones or modern cell phone networks can work without the internet nowadays. No, what are you going to do with the phone if it doesn't have internet? We're going to have to go back to the brick phones. Yes. I, hey, I had one of those and I liked it. I, I like got a too. solid 30 minutes of talk time on that thing with the battery fully charged. Did you used to have like magazines that had logos for the phones that you could uh, like text message and they would send you the logo for the uh, background for your on your phone? Did you have no, those things? No, that yeah. must have been a Europe only thing. Yes. There could be like a picture of a cow drawn with pixels and you'd send uh, a text message cow to this number and they would <laughs> send you the background. It would be like five bucks. It's wow, that's an expensive background. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, I mean, kind of a neat idea. But no, my phone, my first phone had just LEDs for the numbers and the battery signal and the the cell phone signal, and that was all. It wasn't a real screen. Ah, so it wasn't an Nokia. <laughs> no, it was a Motorola Profile three hundred. I still remember that phone. I actually kind of <laughs> wish I still had one just to say I had it, but. Uh, you what was the one Motorola everyone wanted? It was the flip phone. It was very similar Razor. to Profile 300. Oh, you're talking about the... Oh, that's later down the road. Yeah, the Razor. Yeah, Razor. I had one of those. Uh, yeah. I, I one wanted those. one. I didn't get it until after it was cool, though. When I got it, I got it as a replacement phone for my LG that broke, and the Razor was, had been downgraded to the replacement phone, and it was like 25 uh, bucks. <laughs> they were pretty bad, I, I think. They were good phones. I liked it. Uh, that was the last phone I had before I switched to my iPhone 4. Excuse me? <laughs> I was once an iPhone user, much to my regret. But yeah, I don't even think our modern cell phones would work without the existence of the internet. Nope. So that would just, that I think more than anything else would bring society to a crashing halt because all of a sudden they'd be like, oh my God, how do we communicate with people again? We'd actually have to go out and talk to other people. My life would be ruined. Because I would actually have to go and talk to people again. Imagine the news and the blogs. You would actually have to, you would have to trust a couple of mass media outlets. That would be all. Yeah, you'd have to go back to reading the newspaper every day just to know what the hell was going on in the yep. outside world. Check the news on the TV. Nine o'clock. You know, people still do that. Can you believe that? Do they? <laughs> well, I mean, we still have you know regular news programs on TV. I'm sure you guys do too. But, um, yes, I just haven't watched TV in like years. Yeah, that would you. Everybody would have to go back to watching TV again. Uh huh. No YouTube. Yeah. Oh yes. You'd have to find all new ways to entertain yourself because YouTube would not be working. Could you imagine life without YouTube? First of all, Snapchat no. could not exist. There are so many people out there now who have tried to set up their own personal economies around their YouTube channel. Think about guys like PewDiePie or Markiplier or whatever. Oh, and, and we're going to discuss uh, that at some point. How some people think they deserve to be paid for their work. Yes. We're going to talk oh, about that later. Yes, that will be a great video. So there would be none of that. You'd have to actually go back to watching real movies or reading real books. Or I mean, YouTube has become like my daily time killer. Like if I have like 30 minutes of an hour to kill in my life, YouTube is usually my go-to place because there's lots of different things I subscribe to. That There's usually a new video that I can watch and it doesn't occupy a lot of time. Yep, television gives you what it gives you. There's no deciding. Yes. So Unless you have a VCR. Yeah, if you if you were actually one of those rare individuals that learned how to properly program your VCR to record at the right time, which I don't think I... I was never able to do it, and I don't think I ever nope. knew anyone who did. I failed at it. <laughs> Recorded the wrong program every time. Yeah, I tried once and, and wound up getting like some home cooking show or whatever. It was a disaster. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> Hospitals and schools totally fucked without the internet. Hospitals are already getting screwed by the internet yes. because people are now hacking their networks and, and holding them for ransom. And now they can't access their records until they pay a certain amount of money to these people to unlock their computers. And I, for years, was telling everyone I knew that, you know, any 
any essential service like a hospital or whatever should always keep a cop a backup copy of everything offline so that if shit goes down nope. they're not screwed the way they are so <laughs> that's their own fault i've yes and i think that's something that's unique to people who lived before the internet we're the only ones who see the virtue in keeping records off of the internet because I remember when when cloud first started to become a big thing and everyone's like, oh, upload stuff to cloud. It's so much easier to save it there. And I'm like, man, you put shit there. It's going to be so incredibly easy to hack. What happens? We have the fappening where all those female stars all had their phones hacked on the cloud and their nude photos went out everywhere because somebody learned how to hack the cloud. I've never and uploaded anything to any cloud just for ever. this reason. Ever, I think I I think I keep a backup of my muse my phone. The music that's on my phone is on the cloud, just in the event that I have to. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, but one drive still every every week one drive comes up uh, when I when I use me. <laughs> At use least on Windows please. 10. Yeah, I, I don't even have that set up on Windows 10. But uh, me neither. But it still pops up every every time yes. you update Windows. Uh, one drive. I'm gonna try. <laughs> it's like a crack dealer. You know, they're trying to get you hooked and. <laughs> <laughs> we we had a couple of days in school when I was still in school where internet didn't work, and the teachers was like, "Well, eh, I can't teach you because I don't have my materials. They are on the cloud or on the network, so I can't do anything. Go home." Nice. <laughs> it's, it's like days off just because no internet. <clears throat> their only source of information was in the cloud, and they could not teach without it. So I basically, was... some teachers are just uh, reading straight from text. They're not actually. They don't know shit about the subjects sometimes. Yeah, schools are now have fully embraced that. And I understand the virtue of teaching people how to use the internet. And I think that's a good thing because being an irresponsible user on the internet is a bad thing. There's a lot of things that you can do to really screw yourself up. But at the same time, there's, of course, I had the, the, the value of going all the way through high school with the internet really hardly ever being mentioned. We used to have this this program we watched on TV every day at school. It was like a 30-minute news program for kids. It was called Channel One. I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of our American viewers probably remember this. And I can still remember the commercials because they would play some commercials before and after, and they actually advertised the internet. They still called it the Information Superhighway back then. It was, oh, man. They were talking about all the things that were going to be possible, and – of course, at the time, I'm like, yeah, we didn't really think it was going to go anywhere or be anything big. So it's amazing how that changes. But yes. I did not have to deal with Internet in the classroom until I got into college. We had this program that is going to send chills down the spine of every American college user here called Blackboard, where teachers can upload assignments and you can download assignments and upload your homework or whatever. And there's like uh, a message board for every class where you can go and discuss things online and it's never worked right since its inception in 1999, and to the best of my knowledge, it still doesn't work right because I've got friends who are in college now who are still whining and crying about this program. They still have it? They still have it, yes. And it's been oh, updated nice. over the years, but I don't know that it's any better now than it was then. So. <laughs> Whenever a program is like up that long, it's not going to be good anymore. <laughs> yeah, when you... If most programs at some <laughs> point they get to be on top of their game i don't think uh, blackboard ever had any game to begin with so <laughs> speaking of games gamers i don't think there's a game out there today that you can even load onto your computer or onto your playstation or xbox or whatever without an internet connection that's Modern... kind of strange back when i had uh, xbox 360 i only had it for like a couple of months and uh -huh. i had my internet cut off and I just bought a game and I put it in. It's like, need internet connection to patch the game. And I was like, I don't care about the fucking patch, let me just play the game. And it would not let me. So I actually had to have an internet connection to play the single, play uh, single player game. And that's something I've, I've never liked uh, ever since the PlayStation 3 era when, you know, you have to, the system constantly has to update and your games constantly have to update. And it's like, whatever happened to games being right the first time around? or just accepting them as they were. You know, when we were on the cartridge era, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, and things like that, you just, uh, what, how the game was released was how the game was released. It was either buggy or it wasn't. You know, we yep. talk all the time about Mega Man 3 and how bad the controls were. Well, Capcom didn't have any way of fixing that. Once the game was released, that was it. But and now we just have the early access games up the ass. 
Yeah, and it's like they you have early access where they release things when they think they're good enough and they think enough people like it and they don't ever truly finish the game. And so the internet, I think, has slowed things down in that respect that it's it's how we think about a game as being complete or you know good has completely changed and if the internet completely went away i think a lot of younger gamers would get a really hard reality check on how all that worked because yep. you know can't patch a game can't fix a game uh can't look up walk walkthroughs on how to beat a game can't look up speed runs you can't upload speed runs yeah that was something different back in the day in the 90s you could not uh or, or the 80s if you were stuck on a game, you were pretty much stuck. You had to subscribe had to friend. Nintendo Power Magazine. Yep, that's one thing. I love Nintendo Power because, and back in those days, and when you had that kind of information, you felt like a god amongst your friends <laughs> because you knew all the tricks and they knew nothing, <clears throat> and it was, I mean, you were able to really set yourself apart from the casual gamer. I had a friend on, uh, living on the same street as me. He was like three years older, I think. And he knew everything about every game. He jumped into every goddamn pit. He tried every, like every single thing you could imagine in a game. And then he came to my house and showed me, look at this, look at that, look at that. And I'm like, how did you figure this out? I tried all of this. Was he, <laughs> did he have a subscription to game magazines or what? No, he just tried it himself. Huh. Literally so jumped he into every pit and he's the like, box really early then. Yes. Especially on uh, Mega Man 4 Dive Man stage. Like, he jumped down to the uh, pit with the wire adapter, and he's like, check this out, and I'm like, whoa. Oh, he probably fell down there thinking he was going to die once, and he's like, oh, look, mm. I'm not dying. Probably. We have become dumber as the internet came along. <laughs> it, well, we have. I really, because mankind no longer has to think for themselves. You Think about nowadays, like, people who want to read a book or whatever, they just go on to Amazon or whatever, look it up, or... Get, either get the, the audiobook or find it on Amazon and buy it there. No one, or I should say, not many people go to a library anymore or know how to use a card catalog or anything like that. Such a thing, I don't think they even teach people how to use that anymore. It's become like I secondary so. knowledge. I've often been wondering, what do they actually teach people in, in elementary schools nowadays? I'm not so certain I want to know, just because I'm convinced it would be, I would be like, no! No, <laughs> they no. still teach religion, which is very strange, indeed. What, kind of made religion? sense when I was in school. What? You said teaching religion? Yes. They teach they religion do... in your school? Yes. Since what? I was a kid, they teach Christianity. No they kidding. Te- That's against the law in the United States. I. Uh, that's interesting, then. Yeah, they teach you about the Jesus, God, Moses, all that jazz. And they do this in public school? Yes. In Finland? Yes. I'll be dipped in shit. Now there has been a controversy on it because there's uh, people from different cultures and now they're like, well, we don't exactly want to learn this stuff because it's not for us. So it's been a bit of a hectic, hectic times for us here. That's kind of why the United States doesn't do it. Yeah, but we didn't and have. Like, there's actually a constitutional amendment that's uh, supposed to prevent people from doing that. Yeah, we only had. We didn't have so many people come to Finland in those days, 80s and 90s. Probably wasn't an issue back then. <laughs> Suffice to say, I got the lowest grade on religion every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Finland was such a happening place back then. My answers was... for something like Jesus or something. <laughs> Unzips pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nico's answer to everything regarding religion, to unzip his pants. Jumping to other topics. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine but people with uh, disabilities. They have such an easy time now, or easier time with uh, online shops. Yes. Imagine taking that away right now. I mean, obviously they would make it just because they had to do it before the internet existed, but like I said, the, the adjustment period would just be It has been beneficial for them. Yes, very. The internet is, is, is a great tool, and it makes a lot of wonderful things happen. It's just a shame that 90% of the population uses it mostly for watching cats poop or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest tool mankind is, it's single-handedly united all of mankind and made 
instantaneous communication with any part of the world possible. And we're like, hey, look at this cat pooping. But you know what's good <laughs> about it? You can easily differentiate people with uh, a higher wisdom than others. Yes. The and internet has great aspects. It does. And generally, the, the, I find the, there's like a, a very finite range of age groups where you find the best users of the internet. Because obviously, the oldest people using the internet have no clue what they're doing. And I, like, I remember checking my grandfather's laptop one time, and he had like 30 fucking search bars on his browser. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what, what, what is this? And he's like, if that was a know. person, I'd shoot it in the face. Right? I'm like, if, if you weren't my dad, I'd punch you right now. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Same for kids. They're yeah, fucking clueless as well. They uh, they believe that they're invincible on the internet and will go and post anything and don't really care. I am they so say lucky. Anyone. I'm so lucky. I didn't have the internet when I was growing up. The amount of shit I would have uploaded would be ridiculous. <laughs> so you were saved by the fact that you had no internet. Yeah, I just used like uh, I recorded shit on uh, C cassettes and stuff like that, and only I heard them. Nobody else. Say- C What'd cassettes. You call it? Compact cassette. That's why it's a C cassette. To the best of my knowledge, cassettes have only ever been released in one size. Well, no, I take that back. There is a small size for use in like answering machines and dictation yeah, machines and things like that. But, but this uh, compact cassette is the real thing. People getting their music would music stores would come back into existence. Oh. Because all of our music stores have now filed for bankruptcy and are going away. Because nobody buys CDs anymore. Well, nobody ha- still buys CDs. But back in the day, those were the places <laughs> to go on Friday night, to go buy new music or rent movies or whatever. That's a f- actually a fun idea. Internet allowed for easy piracy. Yes. I remember uh, when a friend of mine introduced me to Napster before Napster became a pay service. and Kaza. Or Kaza, yeah. I had, I had that after Napster went pay. TC++ like, plus after that. I was like, oh my god. No, I don't think I went to IRC for a while. And I was like, oh. And now I've completely forgotten how to use IRC. And I think IRC is the only one of those that actually still exists. No, I guess Napster probably still exists. but I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. But did you know that IRC is a Finnish invention? No, but that doesn't surprise me. You mm. clever bastards. It's still a, a weird interface. But that's the first uh, task. Separate the men from the boys who can actually make it to a channel in IRC. I couldn't do it anymore. I've long since forgotten. I'd, I've fallen from grace. Serverquakenet.org. Join <laughs> <Quakenet>. hashtag. <laughs> Old school. I can still do it. <laughs> we used to uh, log into those ASCII RPG games online. Like you go to... Uh, I don't even remember the name of it anymore. But uh, like MUDs, things like that. Mm-hmm. Those used to be so fun. That's that, to me. That was the internet, the early days. But that's the yeah. Music music people would have to go back to actually going to a store, buying a, a CD or whatever media comes up in the future, and you would have to take a chance that you might not actually get a CD you enjoy because you couldn't always review it or find out what was on it. People actually used to do that. You bought a <sighs> CD sight unsound or sight unseen, not understanding that it might not be necessarily what you wanted. You just took it by the fact that it was your favorite group or it cover was... Cover art. Oh yeah, cover art. I could, I've actually bought a few albums based on cover art. We won't go into which ones because I'm kind of embarrassed about those now. I bought Offspring for cover art. Not a mistake. Really? Yes. The I thought Flames. Offspring's cover art was very good, but mm-hmm. I liked Offspring, so I bought them. <laughs> Million miles away. I'm talking about uh, Britney Spears' first album. I totally bought that for the first album cover. <laughs> I can't remember that one. Oh, it's... Surely I've seen it. Her and her little schoolgirl outfit sitting on her knees and... Just, oh. My childhood dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine people who take uh, photos for a living. They would have to actually set up a studio instead of putting the photos online. Yes. That just hit me now. Which would be, well, that's kind of what people are going to have to go back to because Photobucket has no one, has decided they no longer are going to allow third-party hosting, so you can't upload your stuff to Photobucket and then go post a link on some forum somewhere for people to see because Photobucket said, screw that, we're going to start charging for everything. Oh, yeah. I'm that's sorry, you can't use a freeware model for 14 years. I think that's how long they've been alive. 14 years, then turn around and decide, you know what? 
we're going to do things differently. Now you have to pay. That's just not how it works. It's like suddenly Wienerar being like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that? Your 30 days are up? Well, guess what? You can't use Wienerar anymore. Oh, that's, yeah. And the internet would shut down. <laughs> Think about how many people have Wienerar and have never paid for it. <laughs> I have seven soup. My father had a studio in my hometown. Oh, is he a but photographer? Yep. That was like, uh, what, 70 years ago, probably? How old is your dad? Grandfather. Or grandfather. Okay. <laughs> you said father. No, I didn't. Yeah, I might have cut did. off. Maybe you did, because all I heard was father. Well, there was a grand at the beginning. Courtesy of the internet, something that would not happen if Nico did not have access to the internet. No email. Yes. Oh, God, yes. The instant communication aspect of the internet was is a life changer. If I wanted to, to talk to Nico and and talk about our Mega Man experiences, I would have to snail mail him. And God, it would take like six or seven days to get a letter to Finland from here. Text and then... message. Sometimes Hold text now. message doesn't actually work aboard for some reason. For example, yeah, I can't, I I can't call you. Times. Yeah, I can't call you. I don't understand why. I just I think my phone company thinks that your phone company sucks and therefore they don't allow Same for, to talk. Uh, same for Ultima, I can't call him either. <laughs> yeah, I can call Ultima or uh, Chris. I can call them both. Did you use Amazon Messenger when it came out? Yes, I did. Actually, that was I, used, uh, uh, I used a. I used a. What was the. Uh -oh. oh! Which one was that? ICQ? ICQ. Oh, yeah, the little boy logo. <laughs> <laughs> it was a flower when I remember it. Oh, oh, no, it was AIM, the other one. Yeah, AIM was the boy. No, I, I used a, <laughs> the boy. I used our, uh, our <laughs> ICQ. ICQ for a long time, and then actually uh, at one point, I think it was last year, I actually downloaded the latest version of ICQ. It still exists, and I still remember <laughs> my my user number and my login and everything like that. And I logged in, and like all my account was still there, and my oh friends my list God. was all there. And of course, like their last login was like years ago. <laughs> I'm like, hello, is anybody there? Nice. Even scarier is if somebody answered, be like, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> Talking about the internet, how is Yahoo still alive? I don't understand that. I don't see how anyone would still use that. Or why they made so many that. bad mistakes. 98. Yahoo refuses to buy Google for $1 million. <clears throat> 2002. <laughs> Yahoo realizes it's a mistake and offers to buy Google for $3 billion. Google wants uh, 5 billion. Yahoo refuses. 2008. Microsoft offers to buy Yahoo for 40 billion. Yahoo says no. 2016. Yahoo sold to Verizon for 4.6 billion. <laughs> they're still Boy, I bet up. they're kicking themselves for not paying for Google when they had the chance. They're still up. How the fuck? How is this company still going? I don't know. I don't it's understand. like the internet. <laughs> well, it is the internet. <laughs> oh man, we used to have one computer in our class in elementary school that had internet connection and the teacher made us make uh, our first email accounts. I didn't have a computer before that, so it was all like magical stuff. It wasn't until I got to college that I got my first email account. We, They uh, gave us email accounts when we, when we first got to college, That's, but we never used those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw a friend of mine logging into this thing called Hotmail, and it still had the little red world logo that they had way back in the day. And I was like, what's this? And he goes, oh, you can sign up for this uh, email account online, and it'll, it'll keep it all on the website for you. You, don't have, you can access it from any computer. And I'm like, this is great. So I signed up for a Hotmail account, and I've, I actually still use that Hotmail account to this day. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Tell me it's a lie. It still exists, and I still use it. Okay. Yippee.fi. That's my first email account <laughs> provider. Sergeant Nikolai at yippee. .fi. I don't think I called myself Sergeant when I was like seven. Did we talk about streaming music? Impossible. Uh, just Yeah, well, I think that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, the whole phones not being able to work and no YouTube or anything like that. Because, it, yeah, it goes without saying stuff like Pandora or iHeartRadio or whatever it is the new fresh kids listen to these days. Where would all the people go that get unemployed as a result of the internet dying? Like, imagine programmers, uh, web designers, fucking bloggers, network engineers, and what else? I Where don't would know. all of those people go? I don't know. Well, yeah, 
I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, where I would I go? Be... It's literally my job to <laughs> deal with the internet. I would have nothing. You could, you could go back to being a graphic designer. But I would ha actually have to physically walk and stuff. <laughs> yes, you, <laughs> you, had to, <laughs> you would actually have to get up out of your chair and go somewhere. <laughs> oh man, I can't imagine. You would have to actually work in an office. Yes. And like wear a tie and things like that. <laughs> no. I only have like three ties. They're going to notice that I don't change them often enough. <laughs> your entire social life will change. What color are your ties? Some... I have a gray and a black and a blue and a green. I wish my tie collection was that simple. Why do you have so many ties? Because my wife makes me. I see. <laughs> Actually, no, she she doesn't bug me much about my ties. The only tie that she's ever picked out for me, really, was the one that I wore at my wedding. Well, that and, would make sense. And she picked that, that design, and it was, it was a good design, so... Companies not being able to advertise online, that would create amazing uh, things. Well, yeah, they, I mean, all they would have is what existed before, and that's advertising on television and in magazines. And, yeah, it's just, things would be... Well, I am actually worked to their advantage because I'm sure most companies, the budget they use for advertising these days is astronomical Zero. compared to what it was back in back in those days because there's so many different places online to advertise. You know, you, I mean, even like YouTube, I think they have like their own, they don't advertise anywhere else except on YouTube. If you, if you get in a license with them, I don't think it goes to any of the other Google stuff. I think it's just YouTube. Yep, some, some companies just use Zero budget because they can just uh, advertise online and then they are in the sea of companies millions and millions of companies and they will never get seen yeah like advertising through social media and stuff like that yep yes that's true that is one one area where i think i would be okay with the internet not existing is because i actually even though i use it and i find myself addicted to it i cannot stand social media mm -hmm. and i cannot stand what social media has done to society and I, th I think we've covered that before Yes. But uh, it's, I think it has done more to turn the IQ of the average human being into a box of shit than anything else. Can't video call your family anymore that are across the globe? I've maybe used video chat twice in my life. Same. But there's I, other people in the world besides us. I dated a girl and that moved back to Canada, and after she went back to Canada, we used video chat a few times, and oh, that was it. I see. I think the, the reason I think about this sort of thing so often is I watch a lot of channels on YouTube that focus like on old technology, like Lazy Game Reviews or the 8-Bit Guy. Oh, yeah. I watch and the Lazy Game Reviews as well. I like watching all this stuff about old computers, and it, it takes me back. I wish yeah. I could find a copy of my first computer, a Leading Edge Model D. I had an IBM Aptiva. Is that a 486? Mm, or is it a 100 Pentium? megahertz. It's a Pentium. Pentium 1. Yes. Wow, you're so young. Thanks. <laughs> My leading edge Model D was like a, a 186 uh, IBM compatible with a five and a quarter uh, floppy drive, no mouse, no Windows, strictly MS DOS. My cousin had a, a 486 with like Windows 3.2 or whatever the fuck it was called. 3.1. Yep. I liked Windows 3.1. It was it was a fun little operating system. Online learning would be literally impossible. That gets people who are uh, not necessarily gonna get to a school. or You mean like people in... Who, people who don't get invited to uh, school. That can actually try and... Uh, invited to do... school? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like you're not cool enough to come to school, so you have to learn online. <laughs> you don't have that? No. How does that work, then? I mean, are you talking about like on the college level or... No, later. Grade school? Okay. So when I went to computer science uh, studies, I had to do a two-part test and I had to get a certain number of points for them to even consider me uh, getting to that school. And then they uh, held an interview of why I should, uh, why they should accept me. And then they finally accepted. That's how it works here. Wow, you guys are some elitist bastards. You never heard of that? We have a standardized testing system here. If you, There's one of two tests you can take. One's called the SAT and the other's called the ACT. 
and mm -hmm. all colleges have like a minimum requirement for you to you have to make a certain level on the, the one or other you don't have to do both one or the other of those tests in order to be able to be accepted into college and generally once you meet that for most colleges except for like the ivy elite ones uh, once you meet that requirement, and if you can pay tuition, boom, you can go to whatever school you want. <laughs> I like how you laughed at that at first. Invited to school? <laughs> <laughs> you, you actually get invitations to school here. You get a letter. I, I mean, I guess you get a, we get letters of acceptance when you get accepted mm -hmm. to a school, but I mean, it's not like an interview process for the most part. It's you meet the requirements. Okay, you can go to school. And it's ridiculously hard to get to a school here. Ridiculous. You can try for five, hour, uh, five hours, five years straight and still not get to uh, any. I thought one of the whole things about not having to pay for your education over there is that everybody can do it. They can, but if you want to go higher, then it becomes a bit of a problem. I if you see. just want to pick up trash and be a janitor, then you don't have to do much. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm gonna need you to come and, and go on a couple talk shows here in the United States so we can educate the public on things like this. <laughs> my point, so yes, stuff my like point that, was still online learning it would be impossible. And that would affect uh, people, especially folks who like live in remote areas like in Tibet where they don't go to school, they just kind of sit in caves and hum all day long. <laughs> Or whatever it is they do. <laughs> if we have any fans in Tibet, I'm really sorry. <laughs> How did you get that kind of <laughs> in your mind? I don't know. I don't, but, but yeah, people Tibet. like that would not be able to go to school. And then, yeah, people who require internet access right now to be invited to school, God help you, <laughs> you guys would be out of luck too. That's, wow, blows my mind. You have to be invited to school. Yes. I wouldn't want to go to a school where I had to be invited. That's just a bunch of elitist assholes. It's kind of ridiculous in the sense that you have to already know something about the things you're going to study to be accepted. And you're like, but isn't that the reason I'm going to school to learn about it? I could sort of see that. I mean, they want you, they want to make sure that you at least have a, a basic fundamental understanding of what you're getting into, I guess. Mm -hmm. You could not use the internet to look up how-to videos or things like that. I can't tell you how many things like I've looked up on the internet because I didn't know how to do it and I wanted to learn how to do it and I didn't want to pay to go to school to do it, so I went on to YouTube. That's the best source for information. Videos. You can uh, even find a certain model of a car, a certain problem that they all have and find it and fix it. Yes, and that is one good thing, I guess, because it saves a lot of people money from having to go to shops to get them fixed. But at the same time, videos like that oftentimes can teach you just enough information to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Is it just me or is it like every time... There's someone who's teaching you about a problem, like, of a car or something. They're, like, extremely obnoxious people. Yes. But they're, like, they're shaking the camera and they're, like, just tell me how to do it. Or anytime someone's trying to teach you how to do something on the computer, it's always some Indian asshole. Those are the only <laughs> guys who ever upload how-to videos on computer stuff. It's some Indian guy who speaks with a really bad accent and... Mm -hmm. You're like, is that English? And the funny thing about that is, is English is one of the two national languages of India. I see. And they still speak it terribly. I have to go back to the menu. I'm dumb. <laughs> 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 so, I think we can safely say that if the internet did not exist, I would laugh just because, you know, people like you and me, we we know what the world was like before the internet existed. Well, me to a better extent than you, but I mean, you were still... Yes. But like... People like my wife, who is considerably younger than me, lived before the internet, but doesn't remember life before the internet. And it's... Like, I don't either, to be honest. I was like seven when it came out. Oh, well, well. But I, I can remember having to go outside to play and playing with action figures with my friends or riding bikes and stuff like that. When I mean, we played video games, but it wasn't like we weren't glued to our phones or anything like that. It and wasn't saying... to me either. I was like still like, what... 13, 14, and I, we had the internet for several years by then, but I didn't care that much. I still played outside. It was still a growing thing at that point. It hadn't become the all-encompassing affair that it is now. Because it wasn't, I think, well into the 2000s before the internet really hit its stride, <clears throat> I think, for the average user. Because before that, I mean, pages took a long time to load. It was usually... The only pages, or the most of the pages that were on the internet were like personal pages where someone would like upload a photo of themselves, talk a little bit about themselves, and have like 30 GIF file, animated GIF files that took half an hour to load. <laughs> so they'd always 
have like this animated file of one of the little guys from Diablo swinging a sword or whatever, and they put like <laughs> fifteen of them in a row. And God, I hated the internet back then. It was awful time for uh, web development or the lack of. But if you ever wanted to build your own page, that was the best thing to do. Though, was go and like just pull up the source code for a page that you really liked <laughs> and you figured out what part of the HTML made that work. And yeah, we just go to tripod.com and click things. See, that's just the cop out. I did this. I, have I didn't know how to figures. code. I was fucking ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to load a MIDI file. So basically, I think we've proven that. I don't think modern society could exist without the internet. I think there's a select group of us that would all kind of sit back and laugh and watch the chaos ensue, but inevitably we would be affected too because, you know, so much of our lives have become integrated with the internet that if it ever went away, we, you would just see mass pandemonium. I think there would be riots in the streets and, you know. It would take 10 away. years for companies to recover and build their stuff uh, the way it was before the internet came out. Yeah. We'd have Probably to go back in time, literally. Let's just hope and pray that nothing ever happens, and we don't have to worry about that. But uh, I don't really care. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> alright with watching the world burn. Isn't it already? Uh, if not, it should be.